In this case, you have to build everything. There's no live action footage to anchor you, and there's no live action actors to anchor you, right? And so, you know, it's a lot of responsibility, not to mention that you're taking on um, such a beloved original animated film, and you're trying to recreate, you know, a different thing that stands on its own in its own way. It started really with, with sort of talking with John Favreau about what did we want to do differently and how we made this movie. And so we started with, you know, virtual production technology and game engines and playing around over that summer of 2016, uh, learning what it had to offer us. Um, and then that sort of is the first half of the whole thing. You know, how do you shoot the thing uh, in the way he wanted to, combining animated process with live action process. And then the second half is this incredible process of hundreds of artists piling on you know and just working through the shot by shot by shot until you have two hours of stuff and honestly you have really high ambitions at the beginning and you don't always know how much you can fulfill it you know but we've had great partners with Disney and John that are you know they love doing ambitious things and a great studio here at MPC of artists who are just you know so amped up to do this movie and so I think you just had a lot of giving from everywhere, you know, people wanted it to be fantastic. The Technicolor Virtual Production Pipeline allows us to basically write a type of video game, which is about roaming around in a landscape and recording camera moves um, and bringing in performances of lions and, and other animals. And also, you know, changing things, changing the sets, moving the sun, um, you know, designing entirely new things because you are inspired to be there. And that's the exciting bridge that we built to these live action people. We said, hey, come make computer graphics with us. In fact, don't just make it with us, jump into the world of it and be in it, you know, it's really cool. So phase one is this whole virtual shoot where we do rough animation, we build rough versions of the sets. They kind of look like rough video games and you put it all together and you shoot every shot. And now you have a complete edit of the whole movie with dialogue and temporary music and you, you really have every shot. And it's not just a study. These are choices that John and Caleb and the other filmmakers were putting into place. Every one of those shots is sort of like a 3D file, like a data file that comes here to MPC London. And it comes into the departments and we have experts on all these areas. You know, we have a layout department that works out all the space and, all the, and imports all those cameras and lines it all up and makes sure that the scene is going to work. Animation department jumps right on the characters and starts creating the super delicate fine performances. The environments and sets department creates the entire African savanna, you know, painstakingly with our team in our Bangalore site in India, our team in our London site, making literally like thousands of plants and trees and rocks and things. And all of this gets brought together. And then the lighting department and the simulation departments, which add the movement of the water, the movement of the fur, they all come in and they complete the realism so that the world the character in the world, the way the light works off all those materials, the way every little blade of grass is moving, everything has to be just right. If any one of those parts kind of isn't up to par against the others, something doesn't feel right. And so every department, every specialist really needs to bring their game. And finally you start putting the scenes in front of John and he sort of like looks around and he finds things that are kind of, you know, causing him a concern either uh, they could be distracting, or they don't creatively support the emotion of the scene, or they don't feel real to him, or he wants to say something different visually, you know, like in terms of mood. So you sort of bring it up, and you find what's working and not working, and you tune it as you go um, in this race against the clock to get it into the cinema. Animators also um, gave John the ability to find scenes and tune scenes. Um, it's less of an emphasis on a single momentary performance and it's really about building a scene up and tuning that scene over weeks or even months sometimes um, and allowing John to see how the performances are working with the lighting and all the scenery and everything so that's really when we talk about bringing two approaches together we're talking about that animation process because it is a lengthy process and you know the live action sensibility and those filmmakers participating in what's traditionally been an area that they can't participate in. There's probably a statistic that said if you had one computer, you know, it would take uh, 30,000 years to render this movie or something. That rendering process is, is how we take 
all the geometry and all of the the world we've made inside the computer and we we sort of find how light bounces around it and interacts with every object and the color of every object and creates you know what is kind of like a photograph of it um, I can tell you that per frame um, just for one frame and there are 24 frames in every second and then you have a two different points of view in order to have the 3d so that's you know twice per frame you can be 40 60 hours uh, on, a, on a computer rendering that single frame um, so and we don't render it once because we have to render it a few times along the way to see how we're going. So there's definitely like a huge computing power concern here. <laughs> you are basically got to combine a, a sort of sensibility of what looks natural with also what looks good and what has appeal or what has a sense of design. How does Pride Rock itself stand out from the landscape but look part of it? So it doesn't look too contrived. And then how does the details of it make you believe it's a completely real thing? You know, that sort of folding together of, of or balance of points of view and skills is true everywhere inside MPC. I mean, the animator has to do the same thing. How do I make this movement feel real, but also feel connected to a voice performance? Um, how do I make the light look real, but also create a composition so the photograph looks beautiful, but not too beautiful? Um, John has, uh, as a student of the form and as, a, as an actor and as a writer, is always working with us on those balances um, so that you can create something that feels completely real and parts of your brain believe it and you don't think about it. And at the same time, it works the way we know good visual storytelling works. And, that, and, you know, and that's very hard to do. Good visual storytelling is a whole thing in and of itself outside of computer graphics or live action or animation or any of these other debates. Um, just telling stories with pictures itself is really tricky. And so our whole goal at MPC is to be, you know, like a great uh, partner for a filmmaker like John and, and, f and work on it together all through the process and just keep finding it and refining it. You must take your place. In the circle of life.